So the management in the administration has changed quite a bit. Uh, everything's pretty much run via PowerShell command lines. There's uh, 140 command lines uh, defined today. Uh, all, all your administrative work is performed via PowerShell or through the control panel, which actually runs the PowerShell in the background. Uh, your user policies within Link are actually in band. There's no GPO-based uh, policies that are required. You have a global, a, a, excuse me, a site and a user-level-based policy. So you can have those uh, non-domain joined computers actually receive their policies uh, via in-band. Here's an example of the actual uh, control panel and the PowerShell management shell. Uh, so they're really doing the same thing within this picture here. I kind of ran the same command in the background. So. So some other improvements, uh, the monitoring and archiving servers report templates have been uh, improved and the numbers have been increased. There's a lot of input from their own uh, Office 365 group that helped uh, refine some of those. The archiving role now maintains your IM conversations and the conference in details. Before the conference in details were pretty much maintained on a file share and the actual uh, SCOM 2007 R2 management pack has been improved uh, to hopefully give less false positives and give a better overview of the environment. So the central management store, as I said before, is pretty, the biggest change. I mean, it's the whole new architecture of defining your topology and managing your topology. So stored within a SQL DB, if it's an enterprise pool, it's within a full version of the SQL. If it's a Standard edition, it's within the SQL Express. So anytime there are changes that are made, each of those changes are then published to the servers, and the servers are responsible for updating and then publishing back the status. Even within the Edge servers themselves, you now have a uh, SSL link that's pushing out the configuration to the Edge server and receiving the status back that has applied those uh, changes. So the... SQL Server CMS role is actually published to the first enterprise edition or the first standard edition that you configure within your site. So I'm going to make sure that you plan that. Uh, the uh, actual movement of it's a little more difficult. So in order for a actual server role to be added to your environment, it has to be defined within the CMS store, and if it's not configured there, it will not install the application on the server. Uh, another piece is in order to actually publish that configuration, it has to pass its validation checks, and that's another reason why they put it into SQL is it allows uh, more of a d data validation before you actually allow that to take place. Um, that and the schema changes or if they want to make a change, they do not have to update the schema in order to change the configuration over on the link, server, link applications. Your user data is still maintained in AD and configuration is still maintained in AD just for backwards compatibility with the OCS 2007 versions. The PBX features that are out there are North America E911 services so this includes the location information service definition within your environment, and then it really re requires you to have a service with one of the providers that are out there. Um, right now, Microsoft has agreements with uh, 911 Enable and Entrato, and they provide the actual uh, PSAP routing of the calls. Um, the piece that the link is providing is truly defining your location or requesting that location if you're not within a defined subnet. The call park feature allows you to park a call and pick it up later or um, call or name and number display options. You can change what's published either on the route level or user level. Um, you also have the malicious call trace which allows you to report a threatening call and allow someone to actually uh, be alerted. Uh, private number allows you to have a number that you do not publish to someone that you can make uh, phone calls on. 
or receive phone calls on. The response group anonymization is actually the ability of someone within a who's part of a response group queue, they can actually make a call out and not say it's John Smith. It basically comes out as that group. And so you're not publishing your information when you're trying to return a call, especially like in a help desk application where someone can call you back, where someone tries to call you back and bypass the whole process. The standalone phone devices are definitely a uh, enhancement. You can create contact objects that allow these phones to exist. You can have certain features that are allowed from the phone for everyone to use with limited call capacity, maybe just dialing internal numbers. But then if someone comes by and enters their PIN, it allows them to dial any number they would be able to from their own desk. Uh, the sub survival branch appliance allows for um, the capabilities of the users at a remote office to still maintain their phone calls, still maintain IM, even if the WAN connection goes down back to their whole system. So it's a primary slash backup registrar system that allows uh, about 85% of the features. Um, minus conferencing. Your media bypass and call admission control are, again, features that will improve the media experience by the user, allow you to define alternate paths, either going out to the Internet, going out to the PSTN, uh, anytime there's a WAN blockage or you're at capacity. Um, all right. Scott, I'll hand it back over to you. Thanks, Jeff. Before I let you go, though, just one last question uh, about that last slide about PBX replacement. Based on, on what you're seeing and, and you know, our experience uh, with some of the early adopter customers that Azalis has been working with, do you, do you think Microsoft has, has met the bar? Is it, is it ready? Is Link ready for a PBX as a full PBS, PBX replacement? Yeah, I believe it has the survivable capabilities. Um, it, there may be about 1% of uh, – Features that may be out there in some other solutions that it doesn't meet, but for the most part, I think they've answered the whole survivability issue um, in the past. And just the fact that they have these alternate media paths, I think they've improved the media quality quite a bit. Good, thanks. Uh, so everyone, um, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. We, we are running a bit over time, and so. Um, Rather than uh, try to answer the questions that have come in now, uh, we will go ahead and, uh, well, you know what, I, 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 uh, there's one question that I've, I've heard that I just want to get clarity uh, from Jeff on for people. Jeff, the question is whether or not people uh, can uh, upgrade to link on the back end but still continue to use their quote-unquote old uh, OCS clients on the front end. Is that configuration supported? Yes. Um, you, what you do not receive when you do that is the DNS load balancing feature. So if you're going to go that route, I suggest using a hardware load balancer or just uh, accept the fact that if you lose the front end server, you need to go in and update your DNS, remove that, and you're still going to have the TTL time where it may fail for some users. Got but the client is imported on the new pool, so you have that migration path. And that interim time of moving a user over and then allowing them to communicate on 2010. And you also have the capabilities just like in R2 um, where you can require that they upgrade. So so for those of you that don't want to touch, they have to go out and touch your desktops immediately. You can still uh, do the, the deployment on the back end and then uh, put your own timeline in place in terms of uh, how you want to migrate on the on the on the desktops. Okay. Um, I just want to point out to everybody the offer that I alluded to at the beginning of the webinar. If you visit us on our website at the contact page and write in free link 2010, we'll we'll be doing a drawing of uh, of one lucky person who is interested in uh, getting some more guidance on and direction on how they begin to start exploring the Microsoft UC path. Uh, other than that, as I mentioned before, we will get back to you with your other questions individually, and we will post this presentation online in about 24 hours. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Please check back in the future our azalias.com website for other webinars, both on Link as well as Exchange, SharePoint, and Active Directory, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks very much. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.